show. I'm Jennifer. We would love to give you our magazine full of inspiring stories. Go to the JenniferSheehanShow.com to subscribe. I would love to introduce you to my brother in Christ, Pastor Brad Wilkerson. Hi, hey, Pastor Jim. Brad. Hey, how are you? So Rock Creek Church, we love your church. Oh, thank you. We've been attending for, I think, about a year now. And uh, I think your favorite sermon we were just talking <laughs> about, and I actually will never forget it. As you said, this is what I thought marriage would be, and this is how it is. And you hold up a red lace nighty. <laughs> I was like, oh dear, he's sassy. Yeah. <laughs> and then the moo moo, this yeah. is how it is. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll never forget yeah. that. Yeah, sermon on marriage and uh, the box of hopes and expectations. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't afraid to kind of press the envelope there that day. And I love that because I think Christians need to be doing that. And my favorite thing about your style of preaching is that you bring truth, God's word, but you also do it with love. Well, I try. Um, you know, you look at the life of Christ, every relationship that he encountered, he, he chose to live in the tension of grace and truth. Right. And I think that uh, one of the biggest mistakes in the church in America right now is we either go one way and we're all right. grace or we go the opposite way and we're all truth. And and I'm trying to find the balance between that and live in the tension of that and not be afraid of talk, to talk about the hard topics right. or the topics that I would say the world has stolen away from, from the church. Right. Um, if the world can talk about it, why can't the church, especially if it's God-given, if it's right. a God-given gift like sex. Right. So, yeah. So it's just interesting that I see so many pastors that aren't willing to do that. And you're right. It's rather like bad, fire brimstone, no love. And I'm like, and I, that happy medium is what I think that the, a lot of churches are missing right now. Yeah. And love that that is how you preach. And your congregation, how many do you have right now that are members? Uh, we have about 3,500 members um, that would call Rock Creek their church home. We're averaging around 2,400 in four weekend worship services on our campus. I love it. And I just see you growing and growing and growing as we have to get there a little bit earlier to get good parking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're limited on parking. We're working on that problem right now. Hopefully uh, by this fall, we'll have some more parking. So And I help. cannot wait to help promote this big church that you're creating or yeah. that God is going to provide for and yeah. just just excited about Rock Creek. You know, well, I'm you. very particular. You can't unknow God's word. So once you've read it cover to cover and you read it and you know it, you can't unknow it. Mm -hmm. And so when when I go to a church and they're preaching, I'm like, does that line up with God's sure. word? And they don't all line up with God's word. And then I don't go back. Well, you, I've, know? you know, I've had some people tell me, man, we came and it was such a refreshing thing to find out that you preached from the Bible, to which I've looked at them and say, what other book is there to preach from? <laughs> right. You know, I'm, I, I was raised on pure preaching of the gospel and the Bible. Um, I'm a child of the 80s, and, and I, I probably heard a lot more hellfire and brimstone than I did love, right. um, but it was truth. I heard truth, and I heard the truth of God's word, and it was preached pure, and uh, so I, I cut my teeth on that, and so that's that's what I love to do is just preach the Bible, stick with what Jesus said. You right. can't go wrong there. And that's been, it's been changing over the years, and Satan's lies have just been bo bombarding our children through the internet, through movies, through TV, through school. And that's what I want to talk about today is, is our children, that's our next generation, that's who are going to be our pastors and our school teachers and everything else. And I think we have a, a really big problem in the world today. And we know that it's not going to get better. We've read the Bible. We know what Revelation yeah. say. It's going to get worse and worse and worse till Jesus comes back. But there's still a lot as Christians that we can do about that. But let's first discuss the problem right now with the younger generation and with the children and what's been going on in the world. Well, yeah. I, so let me just say right out from the first, I, I think the hope for our country, for our culture is the next generation. Right. Um, I think a lot of people see them as the problem. I see them as the solution but only if we invest in them. Mm -hmm. That's the only way they'll be the solution. I love that. Um, you know, once a month, my wife and I, uh, one Sunday night a month, we, we, ha we host six young adults in our house for, for three hours. We buy them, they'll come if you buy them food. They <laughs> I come love it. and we just, we have a conversation with them. Yeah. And what we are learning from them is the narrative that we're hearing, they're not buying into the narrative. Mm -hmm. It's just that, that, there's so much there's so many lies there's so much camouflage of the enemy lying that that there is a there's a narrative out there that we believe that all all young people have been sucked into this and there's a remnant there's a and God is moving in that remnant i i think the reason why there's such a an attack from the enemy for the young people 
is because he knows they are our, they're, they're our hope. The next gen is our hope. Right. And so he's trying to steal their souls, their minds, their lives. John 10, 10, he comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And so he's trying to, he's trying to derail their life when they're young. Because, right. you know, I, I was taught as a child growing up, it's always easier to build a boy or a girl than to repair a man or a woman. Right. And, and so the enemy knows that. And he doesn't want them to follow them in the days of their youth. And he wants to derail their life in that so that they're co- totally destroyed when they become fully grown adults. And then where is the leadership? And so right. it, it all goes back to he knows eventually they're going to be in positions of leadership, leading our country, leading the narrative. So he tries to take their life and steal it when they're young. The other thing there is the devil, we give the devil way too much credit. Yeah, he's, he, he's a deceiver and he's a liar, but he has nothing new. This has been the same thing since Genesis 3. And, and you see it at the temptation of Christ in the wilderness. He uses the temptation of ambition. He uses the temptation of approval. He uses the, the temptation of appetite. And it's the same three things that he's using. He just manifests it in different ways. And as the culture continues to slide farther and further from God, but he's not new in his ways. So we have to be wise, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And we have to be willing to press into these young people's lives and invest in them as a church. When I grew up in the church, um, you know, I've been in church pretty much from the day my mom was pregnant with me. I've been in church all right. my life. And, and, and I grew up in a culture where the kids didn't say, this is where we're going to go to church. The kids didn't say, we're not going to church this weekend. I was told this is where we're going and get in the car. Right. You know, and so. And that's how it should be, in my opinion. Same thing how I raised my son. You are going to church every Sunday. You don't have a choice. You get up, you get ready. And even when he was going to Sunday school, I think around seventh grade, he didn't want to go anymore. And uh, he's like, can I just go to big church with you? I'm like, okay, under one condition. You open the Bible when the pastor's speaking and you read it. So then as he got older in high school and he'd like fall asleep, I'm like, get up, wake up, like (laughs) elbowing him. But so until he left for OU three years ago, he was in church almost every Sunday of his life since he was born. Yeah, well, you know, I've heard people tell me, hey, uh, I, I want my kids to make that decision where they want to go to church, but they don't let their kids make a decision if they take a bath, you know, so, or go to school. Because if they're 10 years old, they're not going to take a bath. That's you right, have that's to right. tell them to take so a bath. It, it takes godly leadership right. from the adults to pour into what's next and in the next generation. Well, I think in the world right now, I think COVID took a big turn as it isolated so many people. And as it isolated, um, I think that just kind of changed everything. Sure. But when we come back, we're going to go into what is the answer to save our children. We'll be right back. You won't hear how God is working on mainstream media, but you will hear it on the Jennifer Sheehan television show. In a world currently imprisoned by fear, I'm committed to telling fearless stories of hope, restoration, redemption, and miracles. Here's just a sample of stories my amazing guests share about God's limitless love in action. God rescued me from pornography and sex addiction. I was on the brink of death, but Jesus saved me. I was attacked by a huge grizzly bear, but God preserved my life. At the age of two, raised by my sister without parents, my birth father threw me against a metal sheet wall, slicing my stomach open, leaving me for dead in a pool of blood. After he abandoned me, my true Heavenly Father, God, did not. My 17-year-old son was murdered on Christmas Eve. I was in a bad place. I purchased a gun each day, went to the lake and held it to my head to end my life. After over 50 guns, I sought out professional help. I went on the Jennifer Sheehan television show to share my story. On filming day, God got a hold of my heart, and right there on the set, I prayed to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. This show is giving people hope in Jesus. That's why we do what we do. We, we want you to hear and see amazing stories of how God brings beauty from ashes and how he brings hope and healing. Even in the midst of life's hardest struggles, God is using this show to change lives. Through the power of story, the Jennifer Sheehan television show is sharing the gospel in regions around the globe. We reach an audience of over 3 million people in the U.S., Africa, India, Pakistan, and China. Will you partner with us so that the Jennifer Sheehan Show continues to grow in its influence and reach for Jesus Christ? 
Donate your tax-deductible gift at the Jennifer Sheehan Show dot com slash donate. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. Okay, Pastor Brad, so the the internet and TV and schools, public schools, and just the kids are being completely bombarded with with so much negative, with Satan's lies. Mm-hmm. And you know, I remember in a Bible study, when back when my son was a baby, and my Bible study teacher said, if the devil cannot make you bad, he's gonna try and make you busy. Mm. And if you think that your kid is gonna be an NBA player, it's 1%. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the, the lies of the enemy is that your kid could be an MB, NBA player. And especially out here in Plano, Frisco, Texas, they're all about select sports. And I think we tried that select sports because my, my son is six foot four. So we're like, <laughs> well, he could be, mm. he might be that 1%, not yeah. really. But um, but select sports, for the most part, you're doing practice two days a week. You're, um, you're going through Chick-fil-A to get your kid lunch. You're watching them play. You're not even spending time with them and seeing how they're doing and how their day went. And then on the weekends, most of select sports, you're traveling a lot of times. And it is Saturday and Sunday games all day. Yeah. I think that's just another tactic of the enemy to uh, to get us busy. Sure. And you had mentioned yeah. with your daughter with select softball, yeah. her, the rules. Yeah, well, it's actually less than 1% will make it to the NBA, but 100% of our kids will stand before God. Mm-hmm. And so we that. have to take that approach and we have to realize that that is the ultimate reality. You know, our daughter who's now 28 and married and she's in full-time vocational ministry I at a church it. in Hernando, Mississippi. But growing up in school, she was a softball player. Started playing softball when she was in third grade. She was very talented at it. Had a desire to play in college. And so as the nature of all of that goes, she joins select softball. We pay the fees. She gets involved in, in teams that travel. And being a pastor and her knowing that, you know, our number one day of the week is Sundays. Right. And and that's not how we end our week. That's how we start our week is in worship on Sundays. And that, uh, you know, she knows as for me and my house mentality, we're going to serve the Lord from her father. She knows straight up, I can't play, I can't play softball on Sundays. And so she tells her select coach, I can play on Sunday afternoons, but I can't play on Sunday mornings. Um, I, I, I have to be in church. And, and was she okay with that? 100%. She respected it. She agreed with it. She knew uh, the mission and the vision of our family. But again, that started long before Select Softball came into her life. That came from her seeing that all through her childhood, knowing that on Sundays we were going to be in the house of worship. Now, the other thing is, is I grew up in a day and time when Sundays were sacred. Nothing was open on Sunday except Luby's Cafeteria, where we went every <laughs> Sunday for, for lunch. And, and we live in a world now where Sunday is no longer a holy day. It's no longer Correct. a sacred day in our culture. And so the, the, at the end of the day, it all goes back to the ugly, uh, the, the ugly common denominator of money. And, and people are making money, and they're using sports as a, as a way to make money. And kids are being robbed of the opportunity to be in church and to be under the good preaching of the gospel and be in youth groups and, and kids' ministry on, on the weekends. I'm not saying don't spend time with your kids in select sports. I'm not saying don't do that. What I'm saying is, is you can do that and still put God first yeah. on Sundays. And so we just had a rule. And so if the, if the tournament she was in was close enough that we could get there in the afternoon, we would leave after church and go. If it was far away, she just didn't play on Sundays. We'd come back Saturday night and she didn't play on Sundays. And her coach respected that. And the players respected that because she... She stood for that that principle in our home. I love that you stand. You stood for that. You know, when my son was little, well, one, he, we did, we lasted on select support, sports for one month, and we're like, Mm-mm, we are not doing this. We are going to church. Yeah. And then the other thing is, since my son was little, he prayed to receive Christ with me when he was like, I think in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And once we started kindergarten, every morning when the car was warming up, we would pray. I would pray first, and he would pray second. And that's all he knew, because mm-hmm. he was raised by this Bible thumping Jesus freak. <laughs> and I'm like, we're going to church. We're reading the Bible. He was in Awanas. My son knew the Ten Commandments by like. Like second grade and then I'll do like you know how the kids they want they always want to show off how smart they are I'm like so son do you remember the Ten Commandments okay let's see if you can get them all right and I kept doing that until he left for college That's great. do you still remember the Ten Commandments what are they yeah. but he didn't know any different we 
I had Christian music on. <laughs> I remember when he was really young, uh, we were listening to, I think it was Gwen Stefani, and she was not saying some nice stuff, and he was repeating it. And I was like, oh, dear. Yeah. And so I changed it, and he's like, it's the blood, it's yeah. the blood singing the song. And I was yeah. like, I better watch what I put on in the car, <laughs> right? Yeah. And that was just turning on the radio, but having Christian music and Christian friends around us and being in church and being in Awanas at such a young age, he, he learned God's word, yeah. and God gives us a promise. Yeah. If we raise up our kids, when they get old, they won't leave. That's right. And that is a promise that I bank on, yeah. but giving him that foundation so he knows how to pray, he knows how to serve, he knows how to tithe. He has seen miracle after miracle after yeah. miracle because he, he doesn't know yeah. any different. The one thing I would say to parents who are watching is this, choose to be your child's parent when they're a child, and when they become an adult, you can become their friend. I love but what that. what parents are doing today, they want to be their kid's friend when they're right. growing up. And, and and we chose to be our kid's parents. And yeah. now we're very close with our kids now that they're full grown and both married. We're their friends. I love that. Yeah. That is really, really great yeah. advice. Thank you. When we come back, this world is dark. Is the church ready? Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. A house is built with walls, but a home is built built with memories. Firehouse Movers takes great pride and honor in serving your moving needs. Built over a fireman's code of ethics to be truthful and honest at all times, to display excellence, respect, and loyalty, we are honored for you to entrust us with your valuable memories. And we have been doing so for over 20 years with hundreds of five-star reviews. We never compromise in quality because we understand that it's easier to explain our prices than to apologize for poor service. Call us today at 972-412-6033 and let us tell you why we're passionate for what we do. Learn more at firehousemovers.com. By His grace, we live. By His will, we bond together to serve you. Jennifer Sheehan Show Magazine promotes and connects Christians and Christian-owned businesses worldwide. It's digital, nonprofit, and full of inspirational stories. The magazine is emailed, shared on our social media, and promoted weekly on our TV show, reaching millions of viewers. To subscribe to this free magazine and for advertising opportunities, go to thejennifersheehanshow.com. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. All right, Pastor, so this world is so dark. Is the church ready? Well, I can't speak for the church as a whole, but I'll speak for the church I pastor, and I will say, yes, we're ready. Are we perfect? No. Um, are we healthy? Yes. Um, I look back on 9-11. Um, 9-11 was a pivotal day for the church. Because when 9-11 happened in this country, people ran to the church houses wanting to know, where's God? Right. The same thing is happening on the other side of COVID. And the churches that were ready, the churches that were bold, the churches that, uh, that chose to stand on the truth of God's word, to stand on the truth of Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. People are hungry, they're coming. And I think we, we Rock Creek, uh, and speaking of our church, we were ready for that. We led with bold leadership to reopen quickly, um, knowing that there would be, hey, I got called a murderer and I got called a coward all in the same week through, through emails because we reopened our building or because we didn't reopen. At the end of the day, the church has to be ready because people right now are hungry because when it's darkest, people don't go to the lake house. When it's dark, they come to the church house. We're growing immensely, but every church in our area that is preaching the truth of Jesus with love and, and truth, love and grace is growing because right. people are hungry. There is a desire for somebody tell me the truth. There's so many lies out there. Yeah. Somebody speak truth. And we have that truth. He, he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. And the truth is there's only one way to God and it's Jesus Christ. So, Absolutely. so I believe the church should be ready. It can be ready, but it needs to be a church that's preaching truth. I, uh, if you're using gimmicks to get people in the door, they'll quit coming when the gimmick goes away. Jesus is not a gimmick. He is the truth. And so if you stand on that and you preach that, 
I believe I believe the church can be ready. Absolutely. And what can we do as Christian parents to combat what our kids are being bombarded with? So here's what I would say to that, because this is this is this is the struggle every day for every parent, whether 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 they're in church and have been in church as a kid growing up themselves or whether they're new to church or whether they've come back to church. The problem in the world is not going away until Jesus comes back. It's we're, the, the war is won, but the battle's not done. And this is not going away. We're going to have to continue to press against the principalities and powers of darkness. But if we're going to say one thing in the church house, it has to be lived out in our house. And I, I clearly believe that Moses is very clear in his book of instruction and laws, the first five books of the Bible, that the church partners with the, pa- uh, the parents and the parents partner with the church to disciple our kids. It's one thing to say, well, the world is bad. We don't want this exposure for our kids. My question is, are, are they being exposed to it in the home? Because as parents, you have the opportunity to say, this is not, this is not allowed in our home. As a father, you have every authority to say to your daughter, you're not wearing that in public. Absolutely. You have every authority to say to your son, you're not going to treat a woman that way. Um, I think it, I think really honestly, if you want to change the culture, it changes with the parents training the children in the way they should go to teach them the truth of God's word. Um, We cannot rely on the school system to do it. We cannot rely only on the church to do it. We partner with the church's parents to disciple our kids. It's interesting that Moses tells Joshua when when he's about to, you know, to die and and, and go to, to eternity, he says, hey, every seven years at the festival shelters, make sure you read this book of instructions. Make sure you read the entirety of the book of instructions at the, at the festival shelters. Why is that? Every seven years, every generation needs to hear that instruction because each generation gets further and further and further away from the truth if the previous generations don't teach it in their home. Absolutely right. And you know, it's so funny. I see other religions and they start brainwashing kids at a young age. So why aren't Christians? And, sure. and what I mean by brainwashing is you're right when you said that if we don't tell them truth, they don't believe truth, they're going to believe the lie. Absolutely. And it starts at home when they're young. Yeah. You, I don't know if you've ever done a study on people that work for our federal government that, that, that they basically, they are people who front out counterfeit money. If you've ever done a study on that, you'll find that these, these individuals that our federal government has to identify what is counterfeit, they don't study the counterfeit. They, stand, they study what the is real, real thing. thing so that when the counterfeit is presented, they know that it's counterfeit because it looks nothing like the real thing. That's what we have to do with our kids. Right. And we all know what the problem is. Uh, we need to bring solutions to the problem. They need to know Jesus and his word and his truth so well that when the counterfeit is presented to them in a classroom, they can call it out. Right. Because they know it's counterfeit. 100%. It's even kind of like going to churches. When I've gone to different churches, that's why I love your preaching because I know God's word. I've read it cover to cover. I read it almost every day. And if you get up there and you're not saying what's in that Bible, I will know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and people will call you out on that. And that's, they should. Right. If you're not preaching the truth of God's word, people have every right to ask you, so can you explain what you said today? At the end of the day, the, the Bible is not a self-help book, even though there are self-help principles in the book. Uh, the Bible has hard, hard teaching and it has grace teaching. You have to marry the two together. Yes. Jesus at the woman at the well, he fronts her out immediately. Go get your husband. And she's like, I don't, I don't have it. You know, you've had five and the one you're living with now is not even your own. But then he gives her grace, living water. But the woman caught in act of adultery in John 1, 8, he gives her grace first and then says, where are your accusers? You know, he calls her out and then, and then he says, watch this, but now go and sin no more. Right. So he offers grace first, but then he right. challenges the truth. And with the woman at the well, he does completely opposite. We have to live in that tension of grace and truth. Absolutely. I love that. The grace and the truth. And, and he's the answer. The Lord is the answer for our children. Absolutely. And, and teaching them. And, you know, it took me a year and seven months to read the Bible cover to cover slowly. I just got up about an hour early every day Mm -hmm. and got my coffee and got into God's word. And then it became uh, very easy because I I made that new resolution. It was actually a New Year's Year's resolution 20 years ago, I think, 15, 20 years ago, that I was going to read it cover to cover. And then I I would start reading it and then he'd start speaking to me. And people are like, are you sure? I'm like, yes, I can feel him. I can hear him. He is talking to me. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody asked me the other day, Pastor, 
what translation of the Bible should I get to read? My answer was, whichever translation you will read. You know, <laughs> right. Because it is living, it is breathing, and the, and, and the words jump off the pages. We're doing a series right now at church called Kings and Queens, and we're looking at the story of the Old Testament Kings and Queens. It's amazing how applicable it is in 2023. Stuff that went on in 930 B.C. Right. is so 2023. And so the, the Bible is so so wonderful. Alive and real and changes lives. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show and sharing. I appreciate you, what you're doing for God's kingdom. I just pray that God keeps blessing your church and your marriage and your Thank family you. and just I, you're a blessing in my life. Thank, Thank you. you. You're a blessing to us too, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Thank you. When we come back, you can also have this power and this love and this peace with Jesus. We'll be right back. Can you imagine living in a resort with like-minded people, full of amenities and activities, where safety and health are priorities, where chef-prepared meals, heated indoor pool, and many more amenities are all accessible 24-7, where the joy of life is felt in every corner, a company managed by the Nicholas Foundation, people who truly care about people. It's time to reward yourself. It is time for the Retreat Senior Living, the resort you call home. A house is built with walls, but a home is built with memories. Firehouse Movers takes great pride and honor in serving your moving needs. Built over a fireman's code of ethics to be truthful and honest at all times, to display excellence, respect, and loyalty, we are honored for you to entrust us with your valuable memories. And we have been doing so for over 20 years with hundreds of five-star reviews. We never compromise in quality because we understand that it's easier to explain our prices than to apologize for poor service. Call us today at 972-412-6033 and let us tell you why we're passionate for what we do. Learn more at firehousemovers.com. By His grace, we live. By His will, we bond together to serve you. Welcome back to The Jennifer Sheehan Show. If you haven't prayed to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, pray with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I vow to follow you for the rest of my life. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Tune in next week, we have another great story for you.